All right, happy Friday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade with a detailed view of what we've got going on in the tropics. It's been a very busy week. We didn't have a major landfall of a hurricane, but we did have Hurricane Aaron getting uncomfortably close to parts of the U.S. East Coast. And of course, that produced very dangerous rip currents and also coastal flooding, some wind gusts near 60 miles per hour and some other pretty big time impacts. We had reports of some waves, big time waves over 20 feet at times for parts of the Carolina coast and mid Atlantic. So even though it wasn't a major landfall, it wasn't hurricane slamming into the east coast, there were still impacts. So here is the major update with Hurricane Aaron. It is now a post tropical system. That means it's lost those characteristics that made it a tropical system. So it is still a powerful system with 90 mile per hour winds moving just south of Nova Scotia, but it is no longer considered a tropical system. It's racing away from the US, but it does still have tropical storm force winds extending out more than 400 miles from the center. So it is a huge system that will continue racing away from the U.S. off to the north and east. So here is post-tropical cyclone air and you can see it quickly pushing away from the northeastern U.S. and from the mid-Atlantic. So there will still be the risk for rip currents really through the weekend for some of those east coast beaches. However, impacts overall should start to kind of subside and diminish as we go into next week. The latest with post tropical cyclone Aaron 90 mile per hour winds pressure at 957 millibars and it is really booking it to the east northeast moving quickly at 33 miles per hour. So this will be an issue really for parts of Canada, maybe around Iceland as we go into early next week, but it is moving away from the US. So that is some good news. So what do we have to worry about behind Aaron? Well, Next name on the list would be Fernand, and the average date we get the F name storm in the Atlantic is around August 29th. So we're fairly close to that date and it looks like we will likely get it before August 29th because we have a 90% chance for one of our tropical waves to develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm. So we could end up with Fernand and also we could end up with a tropical storm and Gabrielle over the next week as well. We do have two more tropical waves that we are closely tracking and keeping an eye on. Here is the first one, Invest 90L. That is the one that is getting close to the Northeastern Caribbean islands, but the last few days, the models really have this taking a sharp turn or sharp curve to the north and following in a similar path that Hurricane Aaron did. And this is going to be likely a much smaller system. So we're not expecting tropical storm force winds extending out three or 400 miles, but it is likely going to stay away from the Gulf. It's going to stay away from the east coast of the U.S. It may produce a few problems for Bermuda, but there's a high chance it's at least going to be a tropical depression by this weekend or early next week. We also have Invest 99L, 40% medium chance for tropical development. It is likely going to move more to the west, so a much higher shot that it could roll into the eastern Caribbean by this weekend into early next week. So let's track that first tropical wave that's invest 90 L with our GFS future cast and you see it kind of passing north of the Puerto Rico area as we go through Saturday and Sunday and then it really starts to move due north so it is going to stay far away from the Gulf it should stay pretty far away from the east coast of the US you can see it swirling here by 3 30 p.m. Monday staying away from the US and a much smaller system so that is some good news so I don't think we have to worry too much about invest 90 even though there's a 90% chance it could turn into our next tropical system. Now, what about the other one hanging out across the Central Atlantic? This is Invest 99L. We're looking at what we call our spaghetti model plots, different computer models basically projecting what they think will happen with this system over the next several days. And notice there's a pretty good consensus or agreement here that these models are taking this into the Caribbean, the Eastern and Central Caribbean over the next week or so. So impacting some of those islands, right around the Eastern Caribbean, and we'll have to wait and see what happens with it after that. Will it push into Central America, parts of Mexico? Will it curve and move into the Gulf? This is the one we're gonna have to keep a closer eye on because 
there's at least a low chance it could head our way. We're really looking everywhere across the Atlantic Basin through the rest of August. There's an above average chance for tropical systems developing, not just for the rest of this month, but for September, because of course the peak of hurricane season is right around September 10th. You know, we've had some monster hurricanes over the years. Here's a list of some of the costliest hurricanes on record. The top seven really from 1900 to 2024 and top of the list. Who could forget about this one? Hurricane Katrina. We're getting close to that 20 year anniversary. Over $200 billion worth of damage all the way back in 2005. And of course, if you were in Houston in 2017, I'm sure you will never forget this one. Hurricane Harvey dumped so much rain, caused so much catastrophic damage across Houston, but also it was a big price tag for all of the cleanup. $160 billion for that one. Next on the list was Hurricane Ian a few years ago, 2022, almost $120 billion in damage. Next we have Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Ida, and then number seven would be just last year, Hurricane Helene, nearly $80 billion in damage. That's one that caused that massive flash flooding as it moved farther inland for parts of Tennessee and the Carolina. So these systems can produce a lot of damage. Yes, things are quiet here. That's just a reminder that you always need to stay alert, be prepared, be ready to go because these tropical systems can pop up quickly and they can cost a lot of money, do a lot of damage. So make sure you've got your gear ready, your insurance, and you're ready to go. That's the latest on your tropics update for today. We'll have more Texas live and local after this.